No measurement is perfect, and error, remember, is the difference between our measurement and the true value of the thing we measured. We distinguish between two overall types of error. To see the difference between the two, consider measuring the height a ball is dropped from. Imagine that we clamp our ruler so it can't wobble around, but we don't get it quite vertical. Now all our height measurements will be a little bit too big. If we realise our mistake, we can do a little bit of maths and work out the errors and then correct our results table. So this type of error is predictable once you know it's there. This type of error is called systematic error. It usually makes all your measurements too big or all too small, often by a fixed amount. Systematic errors often result from misplaced equipment, from, for example, a ruler clamped not vertically, a table that's not level, or a height that's measured from the wrong place. Viewing a measuring scale from the same place every time, instead of moving your head in line with the needle or object, also gives a systematic error. This particular type of systematic error is called parallax error. Zero errors are also systematic errors. Zero errors are what you get when your measuring instrument doesn't read zero before you make the measurement. This micrometer has a zero error of 0.02 millimetres. Zero errors do have a fixed size and so are easy to correct for. Imagine instead that we don't clamp the ruler. Now our ruler is free to wobble around, so the errors, the differences between our height measurements and the true heights, won't be a predictable amount. This type of error is called, helpfully, random error. Unclamped rulers, the difficulty in judging the position of a moving object, and rusty or loose connections in a circuit are your most common sources of random error. Why distinguish between the two types? Because they affect our results in different ways. Random error causes some measurements to be too big and some too small, so it spreads out repeats, making them less precise and increases scatter on our graphs. Because some measurements are a bit too big and some a bit too small, averaging a decent number of them will at least partly cancel out the random error. This means an average will be closer to the true value than most of the individual measurements, so averaging repeats increases the accuracy of an experimental value. The equivalent on a graph is drawing a line of best fit, as this averages the positions of the points, again increasing the accuracy of values calculated using the points on the trend line. Systematic error, meanwhile, moves all your measurements, and so all your points, in a predictable way. So it reduces accuracy, but it doesn't increase scatter or cause repeat measurements to be more different from each other. We'll see more about the effects of each type of error when we look at error on graphs, and you can find more on errors and their effects in chapters 6 and 7 of the Study Companion. If you're finding these videos useful, please subscribe, and don't forget to check out our resources on the website and follow Learning Dojo on Twitter.